So this was the first, um, Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Today, I thought it would be fun to go through the past year of BoxyCharm. As of this upcoming January, I will have been subscribed for a full year. And for each box, I did keep the card. And on each card, next to each product, I went through and this past week, made a mark of which products I kept and liked, which have a K and then which products I ended up decluttering. So I went through the full year and did the math and decided how many I actually kept, how many I decluttered, and whether or not I still think BoxyCharm is worth it. I also went through and picked out my top five products from the entire year, and I'll tell you about those. I also have two honorable mention products that I'm going to mention. Obviously, honorable mentions. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. So I have my notes right here. For the past year in BoxyCharm, we got 60 products total, 60 full-size products. I went through all of the products and all of the cards that I still had from this past year, and I kept 35 products out of 60. So that's about a 58% rate of products that I ended up liking, keeping, and that they are still in my collection. Now the amount of products within that 35 that I actually ended up loving and use all the time is it's much less than 35 it's probably closer to five or ten products seven of which I'm gonna go over here um, but that still means I decluttered 25 of the products that I got in my boxy charms over the past year and that is a lot um, I know boxy charm is a good deal that you get so many full-size products for $21 a month but it is still very hit and miss now I do want to make a quick note and talk about my um, my experience with subscribing to BoxyCharm because I've seen a lot of videos and a lot of posts about people that have had a lot of issues when they first subscribed and thankfully I didn't have, you know, any issue at all. I subscribed in December of 2016, which meant my first box was January of 2017. Back then, there was no wait list. There um, wasn't any wait at all. I just went to the website, signed up, paid the 21 right there, and I was immediately subscribed to the next month's box. Shipping is still kind of an issue. I don't get my box until like late the third week of every month. Um, and there were a few months where tracking information either just wasn't sent out or it wasn't accurate to the point where I would end up getting my box before I got the tracking information. Now they have gotten better with this recently. Um, my last two months I got the um, I got the email with the tracking information like the day after I was charged and then the boxes came a little quicker than normal. I only had one issue over the past year with the actual subscription. I believe it was in May or June. They went to charge my card and for some reason it didn't go through. I was sent an email that same day stating, oh your, um, your payment didn't go through, your subscription is about to expire, you should go ahead and take care of this. So that same day I went in to my um, you know, account screen. I just updated the card info, just made sure everything was right, um, matched it to the card, submitted it again, they charged the card that same day, and then it went through no problem. So overall, my experience with BoxyCharm has been incredibly positive. Now, that being said, I haven't had any experience with their customer service team directly. I never had to email them about anything. I never had to update my shipping address and I never had to deal with anything payment failure related after that first issue. Overall, do I think BoxyCharm is worth it? For me, I would say yes, because it is a great way for me to try new products that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to try or even would have known of. It is also a good way for me to branch out more. A good half of the products in like my top five are things that I never would have thought to buy for myself. And now that I've tried them, I ended up loving them. So I think it is a great way to help me branch out, to help me build my makeup collection. And for the products that I ended up not liking or ended up seeing them and knowing I'm immediately not going to use this, for the most part, since they're full-size products, I give them away either as presents or just to friends and family that I know will like them. This helps out a lot during the holiday season. There was a really nice like blush kit that came in this past box that 
I knew I wasn't going to use. I never wear blush. I don't like blush. I have an aunt who loves blush and it makes a really cute present because it's already kind of in its full packaging. It doesn't have the prices on it or anything. So I do find myself giving away the products like that. I don't throw out anything from BoxyCharm that I don't end up using personally. So overall, I think that it's worth it for me to keep my subscription either for the next couple of months or for the next year. I will be renewing my subscription for the past year. I have been going month by month. I'm going to see if maybe I can go ahead and just prepay for the next year after my birthday at the end of this month just because I do want to see where the next year is going to go for BoxyCharm. Now, that being said, everything out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into what I thought were the five best products from this past year for BoxyCharm. Now, I have two products for my number one just because I thought they were very similar and I use them in a similar way and they are both a great value. The first one is the Dr. Jart Microdermabrasion, which I don't have the bottle anymore just because I used up the entirety of the product. And the other one is the Dr. Brandt Pore Dermabrasion, which is the blue bottle right here. I'm actually already halfway through this one. Both of these products retail for right around $70 to $80, which is definitely way above something that I would have per personally paid for for just a scrub. But I do love both of these products, so I think this is a great example of... Boxy charm branching out and giving me something that I never would have tried, never even would have looked at, but ended up loving anyway. Number two on my list is a highlighter that we got in our April box. It is the Rodeo Drive highlighter from Ofra. It is absolutely stunning. This is beautiful. These retail for right around $30, $35. Again, it's not something that I personally would have gone out and gotten for myself, especially because of the color. I thought initially that it was going to be too dark for me, but I absolutely adore this highlighter. So I am glad that through BoxyCharm, I was able to try this one out. Number three on my list is actually a, a brow product. It was this palette that we, oh, let's not blind you. It was this palette that we got from the Brow Gal. It's the Convertible Brow in the shade number two. So they are some darker shades. You have an auburn one, which I haven't really dipped into, a lighter brown one, which is nice for like the inside corner, and then a dark brown that I use on the rest of my brow. I absolutely adore this palette. I've used it every day since I've gotten this in my BoxyCharm. This did come with a double-sided brush with a spoolie and a little, um, looks like an eyeliner brush. I personally did not like the brush. It was very flimsy. It didn't really distribute the product well. Um, so the first time I actually tried this, I didn't like it because I was using it with that brush. Now that I've gotten rid of that brush and I just use my own separate spoolie and my own separate brush, I adore this product. So I would recommend if you still have this in your collection and you didn't end up liking it, try it with a different brush. Don't use the brush that it came with because it, was, it wasn't that great. And for anyone wondering, the spoolie that I have is just the dollar one from e.l.f. And then the brush that I use with it is the small angle brush from Sigma. It is the E65. Number four on my list is actually a brush. This is the Moda Pro Crease Brush. We got this in a set of three brushes. It came with two other brushes. This was the only eye brush. The other two were face brushes. Now this has become my absolute favorite crease brush of all time. I, I'm not kidding when I say I use this absolutely every day. You can see the pink on here. I used it today as well. It is the perfect size and the perfect shape for my eyes. My eyes are very small and they are very hooded. So it is hard for me to find brushes that work well in my crease and this one works amazingly. This I thought was worth the price of the whole box for that month just because I was able to find a new brand of brush that I really like. I had never heard of this brand before and also just because I have, a, I have a tool now that I can, you know, rewash, reuse, that is going to last me for several years if I do take care of it. And number five on my list is another highlighter. It is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in Prosecco Pop. This, I was very surprised that we got this in our boxy charm just because of how expensive Becca highlighters are. Before this, I had never tried a Becca highlighter, so this was my first experience. It is stunning absolutely stunning. Another thing that I wouldn't have picked up for myself just because of A, the color, and B, the price. And knowing that this is a full-size product, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna finish this. So I do think this was 
A, a great way to get me out of my comfort zone and try a highlighter that I wouldn't have tried before, and B, a great investment into a nice high-end highlighter that I'm never going to basically run out of. So now that we got our top five out of the way, I do have two honorable mentions. The first one is actually the BoxyCharm and Z Palette collaboration, Z Palette that we got. This is, it's got a cute design on the front and it's a cute size, perfect for traveling. They also gave you a couple of the magnets with this when it came in and they gave you two, um, I believe it was Makeup Geek singles that came with this. So overall, I thought that was a brilliant idea. They gave you a little Z pod, they gave you a couple of singles. Those are actually among the first singles shadows that I had ever gotten into my collection. And then this helped me branch out and pick up a couple more singles and just kind of play along those lines as well. Right now, I just have um, a face powder from the Balm in here and I have like a Franken highlight that I broke my um, Physician's Formula like Shimmer Strips, the highlighter. So I actually took the first row and repressed it and stuck it in an empty eyeshadow pan. Um, so now it's kind of just like my personalized highlighter from that uh, shimmer brick. Now, the last honorable mention is a eyeshadow palette from Tarte. It is the Rainforest of the Sea Volume 2 palette. This is a beautiful palette. I was very happy that we got this in one of our boxes. Um, Liv Loves Her Makeup was actually you know, borderline convincing me to purchase this, but then she mentioned that we were going to get it as a spoiler in that next month's BoxyCharm, and I was very excited to give it a try. So this was my first experience with the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea eyeshadow formula, and I was very happy that I got to try this out. I do love these shades. They're very neutral. They're very beautiful. They do take a lot of building up, like Liv Love Her Makeup says, but whenever I use this palette, I end up loving the final look that I get. So that concludes this BoxyCharm year in review for 2017. I'm very excited to see where BoxyCharm is going to be going next year. Let me know what you guys think. Have you had BoxyCharm for this long? Have you had it for longer? Do you think BoxyCharm is worth it? Let me know. I would love to talk about product and talk about your experience with the company as a whole. If you like this kind of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And I hope if you like my content, you'll go ahead and subscribe. I would love to hear from you guys. So thank you again, and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Should I have the box like there? Or like here?